So if you're a Masters of the Universe fan like me, you had not been living under a rock or a tree or some other giant form of thing to hide under. I personally prefer barrels, but that's not important right now. You know that the Revelation show has very much divided the He-Man fan base. There are those who love the show, there are those who detest the show. And there are reasons for both emotions. Some people love the look of the animation, some people are really happy with the voice casting and the huge amount of talent that went into it, and others are just shivering at home saying, why, oh, why did they make this show in the first place? And maybe there were alternative motives. So some of the bigger issues fans have had, obviously, to recap are that the marketing campaign basically lied to us and said it was a sequel, People think they're turning He-Man into a girl. The fact that the show's main character is now Tila, who is a major character, but the show is about Tila, and it was not promoted as a show about Tila. It was promoted as a show about the brand, and that should be He-Man. And rightly so. I mean, He-Man's the main character. And the fact that she has taken on, well, yeah, very manly characteristics. Her kind of her femininity or female sexuality has been minimalized in the show, and she's definitely become very, uh, well, a lot of people saying woke, very, uh, you know, agenda-driven. And I'm not going to get into the pros and cons or the yes or no of whether or not the show, but let's talk about the actual things that have changed and what the agenda might be behind that and what some of the fans have sort of extrapolated as to what might be the motivations behind these changes. And I'm kind of getting into a little bit of the whole conspiracy theory concept. And there are a lot of people talking online that there might be a deliberate attempt on the behalf of Mattel to sabotage the brand, to sort of break down Masters of the Universe. And the question is, well, why in the world would you do that? So to do this, we're going to have to do a little bit of toy history. So let's dive in and talk about toy history and Masters of the Universe and what might motivate Mattel to take such drastic actions. So, Masters of the Universe is owned by Universal. It was created by Mattel, but it was sold to, Uni well, it was sold to Universal's parent company. Okay, there's NBC Universal, but even NBC Universal has their parent companies, and I can't keep track of, uh, you know, how corporations work these days where it's only really like three companies that own everything, but the point is the Shineheart Wig Company absolutely owns Masters of the Universe. At least all of the content. The toy rights are still with Mattel until 2023. And then Universal, the Shineheart Wig Corporation, owns Masters of the Universe lock, stock, and barrel. Now, they can still rent out Masters of the Universe to companies, and they can license it to toy companies. Even Mattel could pitch to, to make Masters of the Universe toys in 2023. But until then... A lot of fans are wondering why Mattel is treating the brand this way and what might have been their motivations behind Revelations. So I know it's a little shocking to think that a brand created by Mattel is now owned by a completely different company. It's a little complicated, and I've done a whole video tracing the ownership of the brand over the years, but the bottom line is it was sold in the mid-90s by Mattel because it was considered a dead brand at the time and capital was needed. What can I say? It's as simple as that. So Mattel can make content, but, and I'm extrapolating a little bit, it has to be different. So you can't use anything from Filmation like the iconic transformation. You have to create an all-new transformation that is unlike anything else, especially unlike the Filmation transformation, which is why it's different. A really good way, sort of a metaphor in the, uh, well, the, the toy and the licensing industry to explain it is kind of like what's happening with Star Trek, where when J.J. Abrams made his new movies, the contractual clause was it had to be 20% different from the original. So it could feel like Star Trek, it could use the name, Spock, McCoy, etc., etc., but it had to be visually 20% different from the original series, which is why the, the uh, uniform's a little different, the, uh, the plot line is different, and the same is basically applied to Motu, where they really needed to... We should rostify him by 10% or so. 
So let's look at an example with Orko. Here's Filmation Orko, right? The uh, happy-go-lucky Trollin that we all grew up with. And now here is Revelations Orko. A little darker, the, uh, the scarf around his neck is longer, his eyes are sort of more beady, ears are longer. Here's kind of a look of just changing the eyes and what that would do. So you can see the 20% difference that was created. I don't know if it's literally 20% like Star Trek, but it's a similar overall concept, hence the metaphor. All right, so that brings us back to the whole concept of sabotage and self-destruction. Is Mattel, this is the question fans are asking online in forums, deliberately sabotaging the brand? Screw you guys, I'm going home. And the rationale would be Universal already owns a ton of IP, and a lot of it competes with Mattel. In fact, Mattel licenses IP from Universal, like the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World franchise. So the theory is that instead of delivering to Universal a brand new, awesome, cool car in the form of Motu being great, when Universal takes control of the license in 2023, if Mattel ruins it, they'll get a beat-up old car no one wants. You maniacs! You blew it up! Damn you! Damn you all to hell! All right, so here is the reality check to that. It's very, very, very expensive to make animated shows. You know, things like The Simpsons cost millions of dollars per episode, versus things like South Park cost, you know, hundreds of thousands, and Rick and Morty cost tens of thousands. So there is a range, but there's still a huge investment. And it's not just a financial investment, it's also a synergy between the animation company, the IP owner, or the IP controller, or whoever is you know, licensing it to, it's a huge amount of work and money. And at the end of the day, really the only thing that matters to large giant corporations like a Mattel, a Hasbro, you know, a Universal, are the stockholders. They're the ones who have to be pleased. Yes, you want to make content fans are going to watch, but at the Everything ends and begins with the stockholders, and you do not want to piss off the stockholders because then they're going to start selling the stock, and that's going to devalue the company. A perfect illustration of this is how Revelations was revealed. Yes, Entertainment Weekly had some exclusive shots of it and a, you know, a big story for the press, but the very first time Revelations and the new CGI show was ever mentioned was in a analyst meeting, a stock reporter meeting, stock report meeting. This was the the, the 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 announcement was made to the most important people, the stockholders, not the fans, not the press. So with that as sort of context, fans are asking, okay, well then why are you making this show now, especially if it's going to revert to Universal in two years? And the answer is all about maximizing the license. Yes. Universal, the Scheinhardt Wig Corporation, is going to have a bigger chunk of Motu in 2023. So let's look at this example. Let's just pick Disney since it's such a big IP holder and big corporation. All right, so you're a toy company and you have the license to make licensed product from Disney. You have a contract signed and that contract is good for two years. Well, if you have a contract with Disney, really any IP holder, again, this is just an example, well, you're going to want to maximize that contract and put out as much product and as much content as you legally can within the confines of that contract to make the most amount of money. So just because the license runs out in two years is not justification for why a company would want to not invest in it. If they have a two-year contract, of course they're going to want to invest in producing content and product because they have a two-year contract to do this. Two years is a long amount of time. It's four toy seasons. So the reason we're seeing so much He-Man content, so much He-Man toys, really we've got more He-Man Motu toys than ever at retail than we've ever had in the history of the brand. There's not one, but there's two shows that are on Netflix. There's the more adult Revelations and their corresponding Walmart exclusives. And then there's the CGI show, which will also have very kid-oriented product. And this is really the prize. This is the line that Mattel needs to see do well. So the choices behind doing Revelations, doing multiple shows, so much content, is... Not at all because, well, you know, this way we could, you know, ruin the, the show before Universal takes ownership. There's only one answer to 
everything when it comes to why does a giant toy company like a Hasbro, a Mattel, a Universal, a, 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 you know, Walt Disney, etc., Warner Brothers do anything? And the answer is always, always the stock price. That is going to be the motivator behind every major decision. Not to sabotage, not to piss off the fans, not to push a woke agenda. As much as I will probably be called a shill, that is kind of crazy talk. Because there is no room for agenda. Because agendas and sabotage does not help the stock price. The stock price will always be the priority. I hope this video clarified motivations behind making revelations and... I hope that uh, you enjoyed this video and share it with others. It helps tell YouTube to share it. Thanks for watching. Topics always welcome in the comment section. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.